for me to uh, introduce our special guest today that is going to speak to us from his heart, what is on his heart, what God has given to him to uh, give to us today. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about Goran. Goran spent 19 years as a professional athlete, as a soccer player, professional soccer player. He, he was uh, actually on a couple of our teams here in Kansas City with the Wizards and the Comets, uh, among other teams throughout his illustrious career. And I mean illustrious because uh, this gentleman has a long list of uh, credentials that he has accumulated over those 19 years. He was, uh, I believe, four times an MVP of the year, five times he was Offensive Player of the Year. He was an All-Star seven years. Uh, he's got some records that are still holding to this day in, in the soccer world that uh, I know that other players are chasing, but uh, they haven't got them yet. But you know, well, I could go on about him as a player, as an athlete that was passionate about his profession. But I'm going to tell you, he is more passionate about something else that we get to receive and be beneficiaries of today. And that is his passion for Jesus Christ Amen. and God's Word and what God's Word has for each and every one of us. So, Gorn, I'd love for you to come up here, my brother. I want to introduce you to Gorn Hunyak. And I know that uh, since your career is over and you're now as a, a, a minister of the gospel, he's an ordained minister. And you have uh, founded a, a, a soccer um, corporation, I guess, it, a ministry, thank you very much, and, which reaches uh, really across the globe, but he does a lot here in the city. I know that you and Gina founded Victory Soccer Camps and Clinics, yes. and this past summer alone, he had over 14 kids uh, 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 attend the camps, but beyond that, 350, I'm sorry, 1,400, 1,400 kids uh, attended the camp. Did I say 14? Yeah. <laughs> Man, you're doing great things. <laughs> it's not a number, you know what about it. Each soul is important to him. Numbers are not important to him. 1,400, thank you very much. That's why he's going to preach today. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> But the great news about that isn't the 1,400 that showed up. It's the 350 that gave their hearts and lives to Jesus Christ. That's the ministry and that's the seeds that are being set uh, in this city and beyond. So it is great pleasure, my friend, to introduce you to Family Church of Lawrence. And we're excited about hearing the Word of God. Thank you. Thank you, Ron and Wiki, for bringing me here again. Uh, I, I believe last time we were here, maybe a little bit over a year and a half ago, uh, we have a new addition in our family. I've become a grandfather. Yes. We have a, a little Trinity Marie. She is a year and a half. She's actually staying these last few days with us in Kansas City. And we, we're very delighted. But it's so great to be here, and we're delighted and privileged to be here. Just to be able to stand before you, and hopefully as a man, a person, and maybe professional athletes to come here to maybe encourage you, uh, be able to challenge you as a coach, as, a, as a athletes, and be able to share something that God laid in my heart, then I feel like it will bless you and be important for you personally as it's important to me. So as I'm sharing the message today with you, uh, I want to make sure that you realize that this is the message that I try to apply daily in my own personal life. And I'm pulling a lot of emphasis. Uh, as you know, that the message is called God's Calling. And as we sing the song uh, to the Creator, who is the Creator of heaven and earth, and as you can see, all-powerful, mighty God, He not only want to call us as a Creator, but He want to call us as a Father. He wanted to us to be a personal Father, the way He made us and created us in a very unique way. To know Him, to trust Him, and to follow Him. And obey Him, obviously, which will be ultimately for our lives when we obey Him and know Him, we will be blessed and we will be able to use our life in such a blessed way to be blessing to others. So, today, as I've been playing for 20 years professionally, and as he mentioned many, many of my accomplishments, God blessed me to incorporate two, two of my passions. Most of my life I have a passion for soccer. But later on, when I live long enough, I realize so soccer is very temporary. No matter what you accomplish, no matter what goal you're achieving, no matter how much money you make or how much places you travel and see, it's all on the end of the day when it's over, it's empty. 
It doesn't have gratification. It doesn't have a joy in your heart and, and, and doesn't give you purpose in your life. And I discover obviously God and then I start to be able to pursue Him as an athlete to be able to find the Lord and His purpose for my life. And why did He make me? So as you have in your outline, in your, in your brochures, and a God's calling, first scripture I want to read it to you with you, He says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, and give you a good future and hope. It's a book of Jeremiah, which is written over 2,500 years ago. Now, I want to give you, go get you get back maybe 2,500 years back. When was that written and actually proclaimed? Israelites as a nation at that time were in slavery. They were believing this obedient life of God for a long time, and God was very patient with them. And finally was bringing judgment upon them and used the Babylonian Empire who came and conquered Israel. Every time the Israelites followed God and obeyed God, they were prosper. They were blessed. It didn't say they didn't have a challenging time. But when they did, were disobedient to God and did everything against God, you can read the Old Testament. God is so consistent. Just like you if you have children. When you have a child who's doing something wrong and you have so much love and compassion for them, you're not going to let them go just do wrong thing constantly because you know you're going to cost them a life and hurt himself. So you as a parent are going to do anything you can in your power to discipline your child in a loving way. Try to give them instruction. Try to give him patience. You will do anything to be able to point him in the right path. Because you know if I put him in the right path, he will be saved. I will have joy to see my child raising and become a grown-up person and be able to live in fullness. But if he doesn't live a life in fullness and he chose the wrong path, what's going to happen to you and your child? He's going to mess up his life. He's going to be in a lot of pain. And you're going to be having a lot of heartache and pain and disappointment. And it's no greater pain to see the child that you love so dearly be able to suffer and you can't help. And the same way God is dealing with us. We are his children. So he says, I have a good plan for your life to prosper. So when he was telling them, he sent the prophet Jeremiah to them. But guess what? They were finding themselves in Babylon in slavery. They lost their home. Some of them lost their children. The people were massacred and killed. Some of them didn't have no marriage. They were in the midst of the Babylon being slain. And God sent them a man, a prophet, and says, I have a good plan for you. A plan to prosper you. Would you believe that? Would you put yourself in that perspective and say, you talking to me? Look around me. Look around me. But you know what? The truth of the matter is, God does have a good plan for our life. No matter what you're facing, no matter how much challenges, and no matter how much looking un this unbelievable, you can say, there's no way this can work good for my life. Because of your circumstances, because you're seeing through your own eyes, and you're seeing things through your own power. How could I even make any difference there? But because we don't see the God as all-powerful and almighty God, because He says, what is impossible with man is possible with me, Amen. with God. And with God, all things are possible, if we believe. So he is actually telling us to trust him, obey him, and follow him, just like a toddler. You know when you tell the toddler something? Why? 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 He can go, why? I have a little daughter, my granddaughter. She can ask you why, 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 for all day long. She can understand. And even if you try to explain it, and try to explain it over, she's still going to say, why? She can't understand it. And don't get me wrong, we're not a stupid people. But when we compare ourselves to the God, He says, my way and my thoughts is above your way and your thoughts as far as the heaven and earth. Even if He try to explain to us certain things we will not be able to grasp. Just like you want to try to explain the physics to the child who is going to first grade. No matter how try and how intelligent he is and try to figure out, he is way above his head. It's going to take time for him to get to that point to be able to start understanding the really matter of the physics. So the God is the same way. He says, don't worry about how, how bad it does look like because I can use anything and turn around for good. He can take the ashes and make something beautiful because he's God. You and me cannot do simple things like that. So today, as there you find yourself, and no matter what position you find yourself, remember that God is all-powerful and mighty, but there is a certain step that He wants to teach us how to know and how to be able to follow Him and obey Him and how we'll be able to know the chose that 